name is Denise Hodder and I'm a geologist that I work here in St. John's. What I'm going to talk to you today is a little bit about making your own bath bombs. So all of you should have gotten a kit like this. So included with your kit is a citric acid, mixture A, mixture B, potassium chloride, and mixture C, baking soda. You also have some colorants, three different colors, your molds, and your book. In addition to the items that come in the kit, there's some other things that you'll need to collect from your kitchen. You'll probably want to get some olive oil. Um, I like a little bit of rubbing alcohol to help actually clean and sanitize your various different utensils you're using. Some sort of bowl, a mixing spoon. Uh, I like to have a few different little uh, jars that I can actually put in the ingredients before I actually mix them in my bowl. Some gloves and an apron. Okay. Once you've actually washed all the materials that you're going to be using, so your spoons and things like that, one of the ways that you can actually make sure that you disinfect your bowls is to actually use a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Give it a little squirt in there or, or, or put it on a, uh, a towel and then just wipe it off and make sure that you let everything dry. This actually ensures that everything is sanitized and clean. So we're now ready to actually start making our bath bombs and we're going to go through the very first step. So the first step is to actually take all of these ingredients, uh, mix A, B, and C, and put them together and we're going to blend them. So the first is the citric acid, followed by the uh, potassium chlor uh, chloride, and then we're going to add our baking soda. So, And then to, uh, to get that ready, we're going to take that and we're actually going to stir it and we're going to mix it together. All right. So we're ready to actually move on to our next step. So what we have is we've mixed our dry ingredients all together, so we make sure that they're really well blended. And what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna add water. Now what you wanna do here, and this is a very important step, is to add the water slowly. What we don't wanna do is activate the ingredients such that they will actually fizz, because, well, that's what you wanna do when you put it in the bathtub and actually make a bath bomb. So we're gonna add the water slowly. Now the recipe calls for one teaspoon. So what I have here is I have a half a teaspoon and I'm going to add it slowly, and then I'll blend as I go. What I'm trying to do is get to a mix mixture that's consistent with wet sand. So let's, let's go ahead. So a small half a teaspoon here, and we're gonna add it slowly. Oh, it's fizzing already. But well, once the water is added, what you want to do is you want to mix it around and such that you're able to actually get your dry ingredients to stick together when you when you hold them together and squeeze them together. So you can see kind of that's the consistency that we're looking for. So before you actually put your bath bombs into the molds, you have a choice now. You can actually add a little bit of colorant and you want to actually prep your molds. So make sure that they're cleaned and then you want to get a little bit of olive oil and you want to actually bring it around on the inside of your molds. This actually helps the mold to release the bath bomb once it's all set up and ready. If you wanted to actually make your bath bombs a mixture of a variety of different colors, I would suggest separating your mixes into three different bowls and adding one of each of your colors. What I'm gonna do though is color all my bath bombs blue. Blue is my favorite color. So what I have to do here is I just have to add in a few drops. This is quite, uh, quite good stuff and it will go uh, quite a distance. So you see I've got three drops that I've added in here and I'm going to mix it through with my hands and then monitor the color as I'm mixing it through. So you can see that I'm turning a very light blue here now as I'm doing this. Okay, so once you've actually got your color in here, I've got mine made slightly light blue now, what you're going to do is you're going to take some of it and you're going to start to pack it into the mold. So I'm starting here with the unicorn and I'm actually packing and you want to really kind of get this in and get it into all the little cracks and corners to be able to make sure that your mold is completely filled. Once you finish that, we're going to take the molds and we'll put them in the refrigerator and they'll sit there in the refrigerator for about 24 hours. Um, after 24 hours, we'll be able, they should be set up and ready to pop out and ready for use. Now that you've made your three bath bombs that are included here in the kit, you actually have this recipe and you can do it and make additional bath bombs. Things that you need are, of course, some key ingredients. Some of those are, of course, available fairly easily at the grocery store. First things first is baking soda. You may even have that in your cupboard. Another ingredient is citric acid. Citric acid, sometimes you can find it at the grocery store. Another place that you may find it is at Bulk Barn. 
Uh, if not, you may be able to find it on a couple of websites online that actually sell ingredients to, uh, to making cosmetic products. And then the final ingredient, I know that the recipe actually calls for a, um, a potassium salt. What we can also use is Epsom salts. So that is another ingredient that you could substitute in because Epsom salts are a little bit more widely available. Then you can start to get creative with your bath bombs. You were given three different colorings inside your, uh, your kit. There are additional colorings that you can buy. The, ca the caution that I would give you is, uh, is that food coloring is always not, it's not usually a good ingredient to try. You, what you want to try is you want to use something that's actually a cosmetic grade uh, coloring. So you may have to actually do a little research to find those. Other options of things that you can add, of course, is dried flowers. I actually have some dried lavender here. Uh, if you have some flowers in your garden that you dry, that's another thing that you can actually use and add into, the, uh, into your bath bombs. And then you can also add fragrances. And so again, you want to make sure that you add cosmetic grade fragrances. So I have a vanilla here as an example, butterscotch, there's a strawberry. So you can actually make your uh, bath bombs, uh, you know, really nice smelling as well. And the final thing is your packaging. It's very easy to get some nice little packaging that you can package up your bath bombs if you choose to sell them or give them as gifts to friends.